STS Imaging Software, Creating and Editing FMS Mounts. This recorded class will demonstrate how to identify the components of the FMS editor, modify an existing FMS template, delete an FMS template, and create a new FMS template. Identifying the components. Before demonstrating the FMS editor, let's look at existing formats and the CS Imaging software. Under Format, select Use a Format. This shows the existing formats in the CS Imaging software. We've selected FMS2. Once selected, the image acquisition will proceed numerically through the series. After the image is acquired in frame number one, the series will advance to frame number two. The numbered series can be edited in the FMS editor. To create or modify, you will use FMS editor. We'll now identify the components of the editor by going to Format, Modify, or Create. The Toolbox window is displayed in the FMS Editor. It allows you to insert frames horizontally or vertically. Frames vary in sizes from 0 to 4 depending on the sensor or phosphor plate sizes. There's also an option for a JPEG format. Note, RVG images and JPEG images cannot be in the same format. Usually, FMS frames are oriented in a template according to the patient's view. From the frame on the left side, it would contain an image on the patient's right side. On the Tools tab of the toolbox, there's also an option to assist in the alignment of frames. Note, if you close the toolbox, you can retrieve it under View Toolbox. On the Properties tab of the toolbox, the user can define the teeth numbers for the dedicated frame, according to the location of the patient's dentition. If the image is a bite wing, you can pre-populate based on its location, for instance, LM for left molar, LP for left premolar, RM right molar, RP right premolar. Horizontal axis slider is used to move the horizontal axis. Vertical axis slider used to move the vertical axis slider. The axes dictate the location in the patient's mouth. For instance, horizontal left of the vertical axis is an image on the patient's right side. Horizontal right of the vertical axis is an image on the patient's left side. Vertical above the horizontal axis is patient maxillary teeth. Vertical below horizontal axis is on the patient's mandibular. Basically, the axis divides the mouth into four parts, as seen here. Now we'll explore the main toolbar. Open allows you to open a different format to edit. Save allows you to save the changes made to that specific format, but retain that name. Insert allows you to insert a frame, either horizontally or vertically. There are also options for a large JPEG image or a preview image for RVG. If you have a frame selected in the editor, you can copy that frame. And if there's available space within the frame, you're able to paste that frame. 
With a frame selected, you could delete. Note, to delete multiple images, hold down the Control key and select various frames to delete multiple frames. If the pre-populated numbering sequence is not as desired, you can renumber by selecting the numbering icon and simply left-click in the desired order. ShowGrid allows assistance in placing the frames throughout the template. Show Axes allows you to toggle the axes on or off. Magnetic Grid will assist in the placement of frames, as well as Magnetic Frames, allowing the images to attach to one another like a magnet. Optimize allows the frames to take advantage of all the available space within the template. This is an image of the formats before Optimize is applied. Here's an image after Optimize is applied. Here we see that the frames are now larger because it optimized the available space on the template. The last icon of the main toolbar allows you to exit. In the Options Preference, the template path defaults to a local location on that machine. If the office wants to share without having to create the templates at each workstation, the template can be set to a global location such as the server. It's ideal to do this prior to making any changes. Changes after the path is set to server will apply at all workstations. Modifying an existing FMS template. Let's take a look in the software. To modify an existing template, select Format, Modify. Select the template to be modified and open. In this scenario, we'll assume that we are going to change the numerical order of the frames. We do not need the toolbox for that, so we will close the toolbox. Remember, to retrieve the toolbox, you can go to View Toolbox to bring that option back. To reorder the number, we're going to select Numbering, and in this scenario, we'll indicate that we take anterior images first in a series. So we will single left click on the frames, causing them to be assigned different numbers than previously. And then we can continue numbering in the order. Note here, we select molar first, then premolar. So we want to do that consistently throughout the mount. We select molar, then premolar, molar, then premolar, and so on. And we finish out with the bite wings. Again, molar, premolar, molar, premolar. So you can do this in any order that you'd like. When you're ready to save the mount, it's advisable that you toggle the numbering off and file. If we say save, we're going to save it as the same name as the system define FMS, or we can choose to save as and give it a new name. The frames also have pre-populated information with regards to the teeth numbers. We can see what that pre-populated assignment would be by selecting to view the toolbox in properties and selecting a, a frame. So we see that the position number 7 is given the assignment of the patient's upper right side, whereas position number 9 is given the location of the patient's left side.
and then we can exit. Now I accidentally moved that frame over so I can simply say no I don't want to save that change but the numbering system was saved when I gave it a different name. So if we go to format and use a format we look for the name that I gave it and we open it we can see that those frames are tucked together and the numbering system is the newly defined numbering system. In the options preferences, users can control the behavior of the image size. For instance, stretch image to frame will fill the frame no matter the size of the sensor or the phosphor plate. However, relative size will maintain the size of the sensor or phosphor plate used so that the frame, if it's a size 2, will be that size. If it's a size 1, it'll be slightly smaller. The image appears relative to the size of the sensor or phosphor plate that was used. Deleting an FMS template. We'll take a look in the software. Steps to delete a mount. Format. Delete. Select the mount to be deleted and select delete. Confirm that's the mount to be deleted and select OK. Creating a new FMS template. When creating a new FMS template the following information must be known. What size image do you expect for each frame? What orientation on the screen do you prefer? and what tooth numbers would normally be captured in that image. Let's take a look in the software. Format, Create. In this example, we'll add four horizontal number two frames. We'll add two vertical frames. All size two. At this time, we don't need the toolbox. We can either drag it out of our way or close it. We'll begin to position the images on the screen as we would plan to acquire them. It's a left mouse click to simply drag these frames around the screen. And if we want all four of these to be aligned horizontally even, we can hold down the control key to select each and every one when they have the marquee dotted lines around them we can select the option to horizontally align them all the same we can do the same thing with the two verticals holding down the control key selecting and align them center we can use the magnetic frame feature which allows one frame to attach to another frame as if they were magnets snapping together. We can order the number that we're going to take the images in by activating the number symbol molar premolar molar premolar for the bite wings and then anterior when we're finished with the numbering, we'll toggle that switch off. We also can optimize available space to make the frames larger. And last but not least, we can assign the teeth numbers to the various frames by revealing the Properties tab of the toolbox and selecting the various frames. This would be patient's right side molar, right side premolar, because we're to the left of the vertical axes. Left side molar, left side premolar, and then we can give teeth numbers to the upper anterior, which would include 7, 8, 9, and 10. In the bottom, which again I moved it, 
and 26. Now that the numbering order is done, the tooth number properties are assigned to each frame, we can select Save. Since it's a brand new frame, it'll just take on the next available name, which is fine, or you can give it your own name and exit and verify under Format that you now have a new format to use based on the name that you gave it. This concludes this recorded class, TS Imaging Software, Creating and Editing FMS Mounts. You are now able to identify the components of an FMS editor, modify an existing FMS template, delete an FMS template, and create a new FMS template. Thank you.